all is ready. Welcome to the Lord's house. Today we worship with divine service setting one Holy Communion on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Jesus, the light of the world, now takes action that just shows that, demonstrates it, and points us all to God's eternal light. God bless you in receiving his word and hope in today's service. Our opening hymn is number 398, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by the authority of his word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. For he will pluck my feet out of the net. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his skin. He will lift me high. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. And I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. 
Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated and prepare to hear the word of the Lord. The first reading on this fourth Sunday in Lent is according to Isaiah chapter 42, 14 through 21. For a long time I have held my peace, I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor, I will gasp and pant, I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands, and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord. He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our worship now continues with the gradual hymn, number 723. I will accompany this by guitar. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Since the Lord is my life, my strength and my all, whom then shall I fear? Okay. Whom then shall I fear? There is one thing I ask of the Lord To dwell in His house forever To gaze on the beauty of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Since the Lord is my life, my strength and my all, whom then shall I feel? Do not hide your face, O oh Lord, every day I will seek your face. Though my father and mother may forsake me, the Lord will receive me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Since the Lord is my life, my strength and my all, whom then shall I fear? Teach me, Lord, and keep me on your path. Guide me, Lord, along a level way. I will gaze on the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Since the Lord is my 
my life, my strength, and my all. Whom then shall I fear? The epistle reading is according to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. Again, as all these readings, there is a theme of light over darkness. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible, for anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Worship continues next with the Gospel Anthem 849, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Praise the One who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with the piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Let us praise the Word incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose victorious, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Let us praise the true Redeemer, praise the one who makes us one. Please stand and rejoin next in the verse. With you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel, which is the basis for today's message, is according to St. John, chapter 9. Glory to you, O Lord. 
As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. So the Pharisees again asked him, and he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such things? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, and though, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did, he did, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. 
Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The hymn of the day is 571, God loved the world so that he gave. Be praised now and eternal. 
blessing of the Lord be with you. Today's message is entitled, Blind to be Blessed. You may be seated. Can't see your way through. Can't see the future. Can't see from the other side of the moon. Can't see how or why. Can't see. Period. Blind. All of us born with eyesight have a truly amazing gift. I'm sure you could easily spend an hour detailing life experiences that would not have been possible for you without eyesight. It's prudent to protect eyesight on the job or at play. We may face threats like glaucoma or macular degeneration as we age. In parts of the world, large populations of people suffer impaired eyesight from conditions of malnourishment or poor water supply. Blindness limits life. People are often willing to bear substantial cost and endure great pain to try to keep eyesight. In the gospel for today, Jesus takes on an impossible blind situation. Imagine being this beggar without sight, blind from birth. Blind. He was without a way to see a way ahead. He was dependent on the mercy of others to survive. Expand the reality of blindness in this man, and we need to see that it affects those around as well. It's a bigger picture than merely some person born blind. Might it be that people born or incurring various disabilities and losses become a testing that evokes mercy or rejection of others? In third world countries today, there's a condition affecting hundreds of thousands called river blindness. We are invited to have mercy and support organizations like Hope and Healing. Our contributions can help them supply antibiotics to treat eye infections and treat water to eliminate the virus that causes river blindness. Might we see this as an opportunity for us to show mercy in our day? This man born blind is the very predicament which becomes the focal point of testing. It's a testament to the truth of Scripture that such blindness as a physical condition should so quickly bring up things not seen at a deeper level, like what was behind his condition. The opening words of the disciples were not, Hi, how are you? But, Master, who sinned, this man or his parents? Now we enter another dimension of his dilemma, the spiritual one. His life situation was viewed by the average people around him to be a punishment that must have come from God. And he himself also bears the curse of sin in this fallen world. I think many people today would rather try to take God out of it. But is it any different in the worldview of a world without God? For in a world guided by evolution's survival of the fittest teaching, he was one who would not survive. He could not be independent. He was a liability at the mercy of others to help him out. What was the cause of his blindness? Human experience comes up short. We can't see how or why. But the blame game can easily raise its ugly head. This blindness is a curse, and 
If there's a sense there's human cause, the questions fly. Whose fault is it, his or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus gave a partial answer to evil, hardship, and these questions in verse 3 of our text. It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Do you see? God is present with us in his Son, Jesus Christ. He reveals a yet greater purpose. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The light of Jesus puts crises in life into new perspective. In faith that trusts Jesus, the light of the world, we see life's ills in view of the cross. With the shadow of the cross always falling on them. On the cross, Jesus died for our sins. Therefore, anything that we as Christians face is not a punishment for sin. Jesus did away with that on the cross. Certainly, when we willfully sin, we must live with the consequences or results of our action. And for many other contexts, like blindness, there is another answer, as Jesus said, that the work of God might be displayed in his life. This man was born blind to be blessed. Reverend David Andrus, a pastor in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, blind since age 11, shared this observation. Forty years after losing my sight, I can honestly and joyfully affirm how God has used my blindness for his glory and even for my good. Through my synodical work with the blind, I have the privilege of reaching, touching, and talking to many blind people and by God's grace, to help them see the hand of God in the middle of their darkness. That probably would never have happened if I had been fully sighted. Blindness has also been a blessing to me. I can walk past the glass cookie jar full of cookies and not be tempted. I don't have to hassle with traffic, thanks to you who serve as my drivers, he says. Nor am I in fear, for I am not aware when the near misses happen. I will not even get into clothing, television, magazines, and other temptations that, through sight, lure and entice people to sin. Pastor David, by faith, realizes his blindness has worked God's blessing. We return to the text. A real event of real healing is taking place in a way that put Jesus' words, I am the light of the word, uh, the light of the world, into action. The words of Isaiah 35, verse 5, are being fulfilled. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Having said these things, Jesus spat on the ground and made, saliva, made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. In these details, Pastor Andrews notes what he calls Jesus touch of love. He says, Jesus used spittle and clay to give sight. At first, one might wonder why Jesus did this. To me, a blind person, it seems simple. Jesus was getting close to the blind man, touching him, talking to him, letting him know that Jesus' words were for him. It was then a clear message to this blind man that the washing pointed to the washing away of his sin, spiritual blindness. Jesus gave the man both the physical and spiritual sight, and he wanted him to know that in a way that the blind man could understand. 
So Jesus used all the other senses to communicate this to him. When a blind person stands in a crowd or at a distance from someone who is talking, he or she cannot be sure that the words spoken are for him or her. Because of Jesus' touch, his closeness, there was no doubt in the blind man's mind that Jesus was talking to him. Later, when Jesus sought after him, because the man had recalled Jesus' sounds, touch, and even smell, he knew immediately that this was the man who had given him sight. Pastor David further notes, Each of us wants and needs the message of God's love in a way we can know and understand. I believe this is one reason why God established the office of pastor, so that you may hear from a living, breathing, touching, and touchable person the words of God. Moreover, this is one of the blessings of holy baptism and holy communion, that the senses of touch, smell, taste, and sight as well, sight as well as hearing, may receive the message that Jesus loves you, forgives you, washes away all of your sin by his death on the cross. As we reflect further on John's Gospel, we can note authenticity to this account as John follows closely what happened to this man born blind. God used his dilemma to become a most amazing and convincing testimony to the truth which is in Jesus Christ. It is consistent with reality that this man born blind, who, unlike someone born deaf, would nevertheless not necessarily be limited in experience with respect to logic and reason of thought. He shows a cunning ability to use words as he dialogues back and forth, both with the neighbors and friends who knew him and with the Jewish Pharisee leaders. Though they interrogate and intimidate him to deny what Jesus has done, he persuasively refutes their testings. When they interrogate his parents, they are careful to say only that their son is old enough to speak for himself. The Pharisees are bent on disqualifying him. He sidesteps their denying accusations against Jesus and gives witness to the truth of what Jesus did. Facts don't lie. All I know is, I was blind, and now I see. He then reasons how no one who has sinned could be from God. When the Pharisees are confronted with his winsome, logical testimony about Jesus, they finally throw him out of the synagogue and call him an utter sinner. They are shown to act out of spiritual blindness even though they see with their eyes. They become a warning for every hearer who rejects Jesus, for they remain blind in their hearts and remain in darkness, separated from their Lord. Blind to be blessed. In the witness of Holy Scripture to you and me, the message of this blind man healed turns from the focus on the gift of his sight to the infinitely greater gift that gives eternal life. Note how Jesus, whom he did not see as he obeyed Jesus' command to go to Siloam, Jesus finds him after he was cast out. What did Jesus ask? Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he fell down on his knees and his face to the ground and worshipped him. 
I direct Jesus' question to you also. Do you believe in the Son of Man? The one who healed blindness from birth gives this greater gift for all himself. Receive him as the light of your world. See the light of his love for you in his cross. Rejoice in his gracious, living touch upon you in the washing of holy baptism. Receive him in the Lord's Supper, who assures by his body and blood given and shed the forgiveness of your sins. Worship and confess him as his spirit prompts. Lord, I believe. can't seem these days to see your way through. Where that refers to the unknown, to things beyond our control, the reality is, even with 2020 vision, we cannot walk by sight. In this fallen world, great are human needs for survival amid great chaos or struggle like war, like falling buildings crushed by earthquake. Many are the injustices of oppression or rejection suffered or people persecuted. What we can see can drive us to despair. We need the Lord who sees us and who speaks his word for us to follow in faith. Our reality these days may be stymied by lack of foresight in a variety of needs. The volatility of some banks has thrown many people into panic, fearing the loss of their money. When trust is lost in these systems of financial trust, and everyone runs, even on a solvent bank, it can fail. It's a picture of our human plight, our need that exceeds our resources. Our failure to have it all together. We're in a heap of trouble. That's the reality of our sinful disobedience before God, our Creator. But Jesus' word directs and sends us with living purpose and hope. God's light revives life in its wholeness of heart and soul before him, our God, who holds the world and all eternity in his hands. He provides where we cannot see. Jesus stands now before you and me with his life-giving appeal. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Go forth in faith. Jesus is your light, despite blindness, testings of faith, and every challenge. Jesus is your confidence to live, your reason to walk as a child of his light. Just think, if the man born blind were only given restored physical eyesight, at the end, he simply died anyway. But the Lord returned and gave him heart sight, which means he's in the church triumphant forever. I believe, he answered when he saw and heard Jesus face to face. Trusting Jesus, the light of the world, you and I will see this man as well in eternity worshiping and glorifying God because of Jesus, his blindness has blessed us all. We stand as you are able. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As you are seated, we continue now with the prayer of the church. Great physician, enlighten our eyes by your blessed gospel and hide us in your shelter in the day of trouble. Provide a home in your church for those cast out by this world and unite them with us in the pure confession of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, your Son abides among his saints in the temple of his church. Shelter all those who seek refuge under the cover of his tent. Raise up pastors in every age to serve them in your name. Empower pastors and teachers with wisdom to make the knowledge they have acquired effective in building your church especially those facing persecution and struggling in desperate poverty. Bless and sustain those who share the good news and grant your Spirit's work to bring about the harvest of souls to flourish under your grace and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, through holy baptism, you have brought us into the light of Christ. Guide us always in your ways and teach us to know your will that we would do what is good and right and true. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who have been made homeless through persecution, war, extreme weather conditions, or famine. We ask that they will be directed to places of safety and receive food, clothing, medicine, and shelter, as well as spiritual counsel and comfort. Please direct those delivering aid to those most in need. We pray that all Christian refugees and internally displaced people will know you as their rock and refuge and receive your guidance and comfort as they seek to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, those who wait for your salvation have the promise that you will not forsake them. Lead those who wander in darkness through rough places, that they would find the way of righteousness and not be put to shame. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you have promised that what we suffer does not condemn us, but instead displays your glory. Sustain the afflicted in body. Renee, Emily, Val, Shirley, Linda and Gary Lee, Judy, Joyce, Fern, Elsie, Rita T, Jack and Rita, Pastor Jonathan, his brother Nathan, and all according to their needs as you know them, including Myrna and Gabriel, Audrey, Eva, Phyllis, Richard, Twyla and Bill, Marg, Marjorie, Howard and Hannah, Audrey M, Egan, Pastor Les, Heinz, Carol and Martin, Gail and Randy, Reinhold, Gary P., James, Heather, and Darlene. Grant that they would take heart, trust you for healing, and find you even in the midst of their trials. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, everyone who believes in Jesus as Lord will not be put to shame. 
Unite your people in a right confession of your word and freed them from disagreement over your truth. Bring us with penitent hearts to receive the great riches of your son's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Following the offering, we will, you can stand, you can enjoy it right now. Uh, let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord. As the offerings are brought forward, uh, we may sing this as well. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and to drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. 
graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the due testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. As you are seated, we continue with the hymn before distribution, verses 1 and 2, then 5 and 7 from 631. Hear, O my Lord, I see thee face to face. <coughs> Feast 
Welcome to the Lord's table. <clears throat> now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you in the true faith, Jonathan, that you may walk in his light and rejoice in his gifts now and forever. Amen. The congregation may stand as we join in the post-communion canticle. God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our concluding hymn, 411. I want to walk as a child of the light. and I 
It's good to know that uh, as you head out, uh, you won't walk in darkness for the light of Christ is with you, behind you, before you, and right in you too. Mm -hmm.